Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach who has lost and maintained a 140 pound weight loss. So it is Friday, so it is weigh-in day, but it's a special weigh-in day because it is the final weigh-in of my eight week cut and I'm going to give you a full recap of what has happened over the last eight weeks. As well as we're going to talk about my week, my little girls weekend that I had, as well as the Weight Watchers workshop topic. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not. Turn your bell on because I upload five videos every week and Friday is always weigh-in day. Down in the description box, I will have nutrition coaching where I offer personalized, customized to you macros and calories. This is what I followed to lose and maintain my 140 pound weight loss, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching for questions, accountability, or to talk with me directly. Links and discounts to my favorite things, my health and nutrition planner, as well as my Facebook group, come join us. It's free, it's supportive. We would love to have you. So let's talk about ending out my eight week cut, my Weight Wa the Weight Watchers workshop topic, and of course, this week's weigh-in. Happy Friday, friends. I hope you had an amazing, amazing week. Can you believe that June is almost over? This year, I was telling Troy the other day, this year I feel like it has flown by. The year is half over already. We are full into summer here in Arizona. It has been 105 or more every single day, so it's been toasty. It's been beautiful and sunny, but it's definitely been on the toasty side. I had a really, really good week. I had an amazing weekend last weekend. My friend Rachel, my friend Kelly, and my friend Cassie all came in from San Diego to celebrate my friend Rachel's birthday. We had a little short week short little girls weekend. They came in Friday afternoon and we went out to Tubac, Arizona, which is this cute little Mexican style town. We've been there several times. In fact, Rachel and Kelly and Cassie and I have been there gosh, two or three times, and we just love it. We have coffee, we do some shopping. It was hot, but we had an amazing, amazing time. And then we headed into Tucson for dinner at a place called Cereal Grillers. It is an amazing hamburger place. They actually have pizza and hamburgers, and it's so incredibly good. We went to bed early because we got up early Saturday morning and we headed out towards Chandler, Arizona, which is outside of Phoenix. It's about two hours or so from me. And on the way, we stopped at Snooze AM Eatery and had breakfast. It's our favorite breakfast place. If you have a snooze or can get to a snooze, get their bacon. Their bacon is million out of 10. It's the best bacon I've ever had. And then we made our way to Chandler and we went specifically to Chandler to try out this coffee shop that went viral on Instagram. And while we were at breakfast at snooze, we looked up the coffee shop and guess what? It was closed. The coffee shop was closed on Saturday and Sunday. What coffee shop is closed on Saturday and Sunday? So the whole reason we were going to Chandler was to go to this coffee shop and it was closed. It sounds like it's a family run shop and so they close on the weekend. So we didn't get to go to the viral coffee shop so I guess it's more reason to make another trip to Chandler. But we did go to another coffee shop that had really good reviews. It was so good. I had a strawberry pistachio latte. It was the best thing I've ever had. It was absolutely incredibly delicious. So although we didn't get to go to the viral coffee shop called Momentum, by the way, if you go to Chandler, it's Momentum Coffee Shop, we did get to go have a really, really delicious coffee at a well-known local shop. And then from there, we decided to go to the premium outlets of Phoenix. This is one of those high-end premium outlets. Actually, my shirt I'm wearing is from the Banana Republic outlet. It, this shirt is so cute. I love everything about it. And it's a size small, which was very, very exciting. I typically don't wear a small. So this shirt though is a size small. I love it. I love the style of it. We did lots of shopping. I bought some new tennis shoes at Nike. We had a lunch at a taco place in the food court. It was definitely hot. The Phoenix area is typically about five to 10 degrees warmer than we are here outside of Tucson. So it was around 110, 111, but it was so much fun to go shopping. And then from there, we went to this place called Sweeties, which is this huge candy store. I mean, every candy you could think of. And Rachel and I found all of the nostalgia from our childhood. Who remembers Etch-A-Sketch, Light Bright, Paper Dolls? They had all of these amazing, fun toys and candies from our childhood. It was so fun to go shopping there. We got some candy, we just explored. And then from there, we went and had our second coffee of the day at another local coffee shop. I had a honey lavender latte. It was 
incredible. And then we finished out the day going to Grimaldi's, which is a famous Brooklyn, New York pizza place. Rachel wanted to go there. It's her favorite pizza. She has been to the actual original one in Brooklyn. So she wanted to go there for her birthday dinner and it did not disappoint. It was absolutely delicious. And then I went ahead and headed home because I didn't want to pay for a hotel and spend the night in Phoenix. I didn't want to leave Lola overnight either. So I came home, but it was an amazing, amazing weekend with my friends. And it just, it, fills my soul with so much joy. And I'm even blessed to say that tomorrow I'm headed to the lake, to Patagonia Lake here in Arizona with my boot camp group. So we're having another girls day. We're going to kayak and paddleboard and tube and eat and have an amazing time. So I'm so excited to have a second little girls weekend. Like I said, it just, it fills my soul. Now full transparency, I did not track my food on Saturday when we were in Chandler. I just ate mindfully. I did have candy. I had dessert. I actually had my first ever cannoli at Grimaldi's and then come Sunday morning right back on track in my caloric deficit to finish out my eight week cut. Yes, this is the end of my eight week cut and I'm not mad about it. I am ready to go to maintenance. I'm ready to eat a little bit more. I'm ready to take a break from dieting or from being in a caloric deficit. I want to share with you my results of my eight week cut on the scale as well as pictures and measurements. I'll be inserting all of that in this video when we talk about my weigh-in. But before we talk about my weigh-in, I do want to chat about this week's Weight Watchers workshop topic. And that is the secret to keeping or breaking up with a habit. Our current habits are big clues into our overall health journey. We need to think about what habits or behaviors do we want to continue to do and which habits or behaviors do we want to stop doing. Try this, monitor, pay attention to patterns, the when, where, and why a habit happens. For example, I snack at night while watching TV when I see chips in the cabinet or after doing dishes. I walk most mornings before work. I enjoy being outside and listening to podcasts. Now the habit on the left, we may want to modify that. One thing involved in a habit that you want to stop. Move the chips to the back of the pantry. Put the fruit on the counter to snack on or read a book instead of watching TV. And then our habit on the right, we want to protect this. This is a healthy habit. The supporting factors in a habit you want to keep. Block off time in your calendar. Pre-pick the best podcast episodes and buy new comfy workout gear. We need to figure out what habits we want to keep and what habits we want to change. And this is going to change, no pun intended, throughout our entire weight loss journey. We're going to find habits that work for us and we're going to find habits that don't. Developing healthy habits is key to this journey, not just to lose weight, but to keep the weight off long-term. This reminds me of a DM on Instagram that I got just a couple of days ago. On Instagram, I always post that my workout, whether I'm going to boot camp or whether I'm going to the gym, I post my Apple Watch of my workout and someone reached out to me and said, how do you get your yourself up every morning at 5 a.m. to work out. How do you stay motivated in doing that? I cannot be consistent because it's a healthy habit that I have formed. It has now become just part of my life. Those are the healthy habits we want to keep. And snacking on the chips at night is the healthy habit we may want to change. Paying attention to what happens right before and after our habits are key. What triggers you? The time, the place, the feelings, what we're seeing on TV, the chips at the forefront of our pantry, or our shoes sitting out in our closet ready for us to go exercise the next morning. We want to keep doing what supports us getting closer to our goals and stop doing what's hindering us from getting closer to our goals. So it's time to really deep dive into the habits that you have daily, write them down, put them in categories, the habits we wanna keep and the habits we want to change and start making the steps to change those unhealthy habits into healthy habits. Your weight loss and health journey will thank you. I really like this topic because habits are the key to success. They really truly are. And recognizing what habits need to change is another major key to success. So let me know down below, tell me one healthy habit you have and one habit that you need to change and maybe what steps you're going to do to change it. So let's talk about my cut. Let's talk about this week's weigh-in. So I have been on a cut for the last eight weeks, essentially the last two months. And a cut basically means that I'm in a calorie deficit. I am not eating at maintenance. I am in, for me, a very, very mild deficit. The reason for that is because I still want to make sure that I'm eating enough to fuel my body, to fuel my workouts, and to keep my metabolism going. But I want to put myself in a little bit of a deficit to see fat loss or body recomposition results. Now I've been at my goal, uh, my weight goal for about the last year and a half. So I don't have a lot of fat to lose. So I wasn't expecting the scale to drastically change during my cut, but I wanted to see 
body changes. I wanted to lean down. I wanted to continue to build lean muscle and focus on recompositioning my body, basically meaning changing my body without seeing the scale move. And this is what is essentially known as body recomposition, replacing any fat we have with muscle. The scale's not going to move, but our body is going to change because fat is this big and muscle is this big. It takes up less space, although it weighs exactly the same. So body recomposition was essentially my goal. And the reason I went into this cut if you remember from eight weeks ago, was because my 30 year high school reunion is next month. And I wanted to lean down and be the fittest, healthiest version of myself when I walk through the doors of my 30 year high school reunion. Now, most of my high school years, I was overweight. I've been overweight most of my life. I did lose quite a bit of weight before my sophomore year of high school, not in a healthy way, not in a sustainable way. And then my junior and senior year of high school, my weight definitely fluctuated. So I'm really proud of where I am today, being the fittest, healthiest, leanest version of myself. And I wanted to embrace that and rock that going into my 30 year high school reunion. But with a caloric deficit, we don't want to do that long term. We don't want to always be in a caloric deficit. We don't want to diet forever. We need to have phases of calorie deficit and phases of maintenance. And that's essentially what a cut is. I'm in a phase of an eight week cut. And now as of tomorrow, I am back to maintenance. So I'm going to be eating between 21 and 2300 calories per day. That is what I eat to maintain my current weight. So let's talk a little bit about my cut. I have given updates weekly over the last eight weeks. So if you've missed those, you can go back to my way. You can go to my weigh in playlist and watch the last few weeks of weigh ins. I talk about my cut, kind of how I've been feeling, how I've navigated that, what weight loss results I've been seeing. So I am going to pop up here on the screen the total amount of weight on the scale that I lost during the eight week cut. So again, I'm focused on body recomposition. So I'm looking at pictures and measurements, and then I'm taking the scale as a small piece of my overall results. After my girls weekend this last weekend, and like I said, Sunday, back on track, back in my deficit, being really mindful this week, drinking my water, continuing to move my body. When I stepped on the scale today, I am down point two. So just a teeny, tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny bit of a weight loss on the scale. But I also want to talk about pictures and measurements because this is where I saw a difference in my eight week cut. And really, truly, this was my goal. My goal was the pictures, the measurements, the body recomposition. So I'm going to insert pictures from week one of my cut to today, week eight in the final week of my cut. You can see I have definitely, definitely lean down. You can see a little bit more lean muscle definition, especially in my arms. You can see that my waist and my back has shrunk. You can see that my core has gotten smaller and you can see that my overall body composition has changed for the better. My body is smaller overall even without the scale moving a lot. I cannot recommend pictures enough. This is really going to tell a bigger story of your overall success than the scale. And then I also took my measurements at the beginning of my eight week cut and then took my measurements again today. So I'm going to pop those up here on the screen. Now there is definitely some inches lost. And again, that is the indicator of body composition, fat being replaced with muscle. And remember the scale's not going to move because muscle and fat weigh exactly the same. A pound's a pound, pound of muscle, pound of fat, pound of sugar, pound of flour, a pounds a pound, but your body is going to look drastically different the more muscle you have. And as a reminder, I am five foot eight and I have maintained this weight within a five to 10 pound range for the last year and a half. So although the scale didn't make a lot of progress during my cut, I'm feeling really good about my body. I'm feeling lean. I'm feeling toned up. I'm feeling firm, if that's a good way to describe it. And I'm feeling really good in my clothes and I'm feeling really good about walking into my 30 year high school reunion in this body that I have built. Now I do have a lot of loose skin. I have loose skin on my thighs. I have loose skin on my stomach. I have loose skin on my arms. I actually just did a reel on Instagram where I showed you, this is what I look like if I'm poised and posed. And this is the reality of losing 140 pounds. So my weight on the scale is going to be made up of the loose skin that I have. And the only way to get rid of loose skin is to have skin removal surgery. So a portion of my weight is loose skin. The rest is made up of lean muscle, fat, water, organs. And I'm really happy with where I am. Even though my weight is higher on the scale, I'm still considered overweight on the BMI chart. We don't know her. I'm feeling really good about my body in general. And I'm really proud of my cut. I feel like it was a huge success scale aside. But I will also say, like I said, I'm excited to go back to maintenance. I want to eat more. I want to get my metabolism fired back up again from being in a caloric deficit. It's naturally going to slow a little bit when we're not 
giving our body enough calories. So I wanna fire that back up again to burn, 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 and continue to maintain my weight. Now, the question I got asked quite a bit over the last eight weeks is, will I go into another cut? Absolutely. At some other point this year, maybe a few months from now, I'll go into another small deficit eight to 12 week cut and see what my body can do. But right now I am back to maintenance and I am happy about it. So again, I'm happy with my cut. I'm happy with my weigh-in this week. I'm happy with my overall results. And I want to show you that the scale isn't the only indicator of success. The scale measures mass. It doesn't know what the mass is made up of. And anybody who has a large amount of lean muscle is going to weigh more on the scale, but going to look drastically smaller. You can put two people side by side that are the same height and the same weight and if one of them has more lean muscle than the other, their bodies are going to look very, very, very different. I talked about someone who had reached out to me and said, oh my gosh, I weigh 20 pounds less than you and I weigh, wear clothing four sizes bigger than you and look much larger. That's because lean muscle, again, takes up less space, so you look smaller overall. I actually wear a size 10 to her 14 and I weigh 20 pounds more than her. So you can't only go by the scale. And that's one reason that I share my weight loss journey. I share my weigh-in every week is to prove to you again that the scale is not the only measurement of success. It's honestly the least important measurement of success on your weight loss journey. Take those pictures, take those measurements. That's where you're going to see legitimate progress. So back to maintenance tomorrow. I'm going to enjoy all the food on my girls day at the lake tomorrow. I'm ready to kick off a few months of maintenance and see again what my body can do in the next cut. We should not be in a caloric deficit long term. So make sure you're going through periods of cut and maintenance. If you want to know how to navigate that, I do offer coaching. I'm happy to help set you up with that and have your macros and calories done for a deficit and for maintenance. That way you know, that way you can use those throughout the year to go into periods of a cut and periods of maintenance. Again, all of my nutrition coaching services are on my website and that is linked in the description box. I want to hear from you how your week was. I want to hear what your healthy habits are, what habits you want to work out. I want to hear all your thoughts down in the comments. And of course, if you enjoyed today's video, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe, turn your bell on so you never miss a future video and check out that description box for nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things and come join our free supportive Facebook group. We would love to have you. Happy Friday, friends. Here's to an amazing weekend and a successful week. And I'll see you in tomorrow's grocery haul.